Hello, Fight Fans. Marcus Hayes with Fight Hub TV here with the man for people that know boxing needs no introduction. Ronald Winky Wright, St. Pete in the house. What's going on, Ronald? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Enjoying life. You know what I mean? That's all. Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, man. Uh, it's lit in here. Uh, how you feel being being at the Hall of Fame? How are things? Oh, I'm happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? This a this a different event. It's got three classes going in at one time, so it's great. You know what I mean? I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Definitely, man. Um, one of the most storied boxing careers out of everybody. A guy that no one could figure out, man. Uh, take us back to the beginning. When you first started fighting, did you ever think that you'd end up here, Winky? Oh, no, no, no. When I, I when I was boxing, I was just doing it for the fun of it. I never thought I'd be a professional fighter, any of that. You know, I just got into boxing because I always wanted to do it. You know, I moved to Florida from Washington, D.C. and I always wanted to box. And when I moved to Florida, I had the opportunity. And, you know, like they say, what God got for you, nobody can't take away. It was meant for me to do it. Definitely. And your story is a story of that. We didn't really find out on the main scene of boxing until you got a little older in the boxing career. Talk to us about finally getting your moment and seizing the moment the way you did. Well, like you said, it, 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 you know, I was box I was pro since I was 18 years old. People don't know. That. I started boxing when I was 16. I turned pro when I was 18. So a lot of people didn't know that. So, you know, I had to fight my way to the top. Nobody gave me nothing. So I earned everything I, I got. You know, I had to fight the best fighters. I had to fight all the number one contenders, beat them, beat them, beat them. Then finally get my title shot. I got robbed in a few fights with the decisions, but that's part of life. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn how to overcome obstacles and that's what I did so any fighters out there that watch my career know that you know you may not get the decision sometime but you still got to prevail and keep moving on so you can get where you want where you're trying to go to speaking of a guy that's been pro and has been unheralded for years and years uh, the boxing world just got news that Dimitri Bivol is going to be fighting against Zordo Romero Romero's Ramirez uh, Tell us about Zuto Ramirez and the b-ball fight. What do you think about that fight? Honestly, I can't even, I don't even know what it is. You know, right now, I'm just being honest. You know, I saw uh, Bivol when he fought, uh, uh, he just beat Canelo, so that was a good fight. But uh, I just want to see some good fights, man. Everybody looking for Earl Spence and uh, Crawford fighting. When that go off, you know, we'll see what's next. Speaking of EJ versus Terrence Crawford, frame this for us, champ. How big of a fight is that for modern boxing today? For me, I think that's that's like uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns back in the day when they fought the first time. It's a great fight with two uh, young, hungry, great fighters coming together to get the fans what they want to see. It's going to be a great fight. We've also got a young, hungry, what looks like a great fighter in Devin Haney uh, getting a chance he took the belts away from George Cambosis Jr. in Australia a couple months ago. They're going to be running it back. What do you think about the rematch? Is there anything that Cambosis can do? Or what does Devin have to do to carry the day again? Well, I think Devin just needs to stay hungry like Devin was. I think Devin a great fighter, man. I, I think a lot of people sleep on Devin just because that he ain't knocking people out. It ain't about knockouts. It's about wins. It's about boxing ability. Devin has all that. He got a great camp, his dad, you know what I'm saying? I like Devin, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Devin Haney fan, and uh, I think uh, the sky's the limit for him. Um, we spoke earlier about Canelo. Canelo's got a rubber match on his hands versus Triple G. What do you think Canelo, Triple G3, or CG3, if I've coined it, what do you think that fight brings to us in September? Honestly, I see Canelo winning. Uh, I don't, you know, I think that fight just is past its time. I think we're just looking for a big fight. The fans want to see something big, and they brought that fight back. But I don't think the fight going to do uh, be as exciting as everybody expected. I think Canelo will win in, in, in Canelo fashion. Canelo is a hell of a fighter. You know, I think Triple G a little older now. I think, you know, he still got good power, but it ain't the same. And I just think Canelo will win the fight. Being an OG in the game, uh, I know that you're close with Keith Thurman. Uh, one time is looking to get back into the welterweight picture. 
What do you think about Keith Thurman's chances of getting back on top at 147? Well, like I said, people people trying to say he, he ain't on top. It, the, the problem with Keith Thurman is he, he, he ain't staying busy enough. It ain't that he ain't on top. He don't have the skill. We all know he has the skill. He lost to Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao knocked him down in the first round, got a good lead, but then then Keith came back, showed his his uh his fighting ability. But you know, Canelo, I mean uh Pacquiao got the decision, but Keith came right back, fight. He just need to stay busy. You know, you can't stay as sharp as you need to be in boxing by just sparring or training. You gotta fight. And fighting gonna keep you sharp. Keith Thurman, pretty impressive versus Mario Barrios though. What did you think about him uh versus Mario Barrios? Did he show he's ready to come back? Well, I think that was a good fight for him to come back because Mario Barrios was moving up. Mario Barrios is a big fighter. He's a big, you know, welterweight. You know, he's a, he moved up from uh, 140, but still he's still a big guy, so he can carry the weight good. But, you know, like I said, keep got to just stay busy and, and, and get uh, pick up with better opponents. And then, you know, they know he got the skills to fight any of them, so he just got to get his opportunity. Last week, we had Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usek. Anthony Joshua getting a rematch, changing trainers, just kind of fell short. What, is, what was your take on that fight, Winky? <laughs> I can't even tell you, I ain't even watched the fight. <laughs> so I don't even want to lie and, and act like I know something. Listen, I don't even know what happened. I, I heard Joshua lost, he was upset. And you, if you feel that you won, you're supposed to be upset. But uh, you know, the judge is going to say what they want to say. But if in your heart you feel you want to fight, then that's what it is. Speaking of that, being a guy who was robbed countless times, countless times over and over again, a guy who the boxing media, though you had tremendous boxing skills, always talked to you about your punching power and question your punching power. Uh, what would you say to a fighter like Devin Haney? Uh, that kind of gets put in the same box these days. I want to I want to say this for me and for Devin Haney. People always talk about my punching power, but you can tell me and you can count on the number on, on your hands how many fighters came forward. If you thought about if I couldn't punch, why the fighters weren't coming forward? I was the one always moving forward. I was the one always pushing the fight. So I could punch, it's just that I didn't go for the knockout because I wanted to beat you up. I wanted you to know when you fought Winky Wright, you didn't want to rematch. You ain't here fighting to say, I want to fight Winky Wright again, did you? <laughs> no, because they knew they was in for a fight. So Devin Haney, they're not going to want to fight you again. They're going to use every excuse not to fight you. Keep doing you, your thing, dog. Don't change your game because that's what they want you to do. Change up, try to be something that you ain't. You're a hell of a boxer, a hell of a skillful boxer. Keep boxing, keep winning. And, and, and at the end, they will know that Devin Haney can fight. And lastly, Winky, um, I think the most serious question that I'd be asking you, um, Winky Wright, a guy that's known for having tremendous waves before the fight, during the fight, and after the fight. Winky, how did you keep those waves intact all these years, brother? How you been keeping them waves popping, man? Man, listen, man, I, it's just the way it is. You know, I, I see a lot of fighters wear a lot of these uh, skulls, whatever you call them. Never had it. Just I just brushed my head. And that's, it just stayed like that my whole life, man. And uh, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy with my waves. <laughs> One of the most loved fighters of all time, Ronald Winky Wright. This is Marcus Hayes with Fight Hub TV. Winky, man, like to thank you for your time, boss. Appreciate you.